엄마 많이 보고 싶었어. <웃음> 엄마도 나 보고 싶었어. This woman is talking to her deceased daughter, and it looks like she is crying in happy tears because she feels connected to her loved one again. Since this video has been uploaded, it reached over 36 million views. It has sparked many crazy discussions in the comments. Some people are terrified that technology has entered the taboo area of the human psyche, and others are actually happy about this advancement in technology. Whether we want it or not, it might be impossible to be dead in the future. We mostly see AI being used to generate artwork, do college essays, writing polished emails, and etc. But there is one AI industry that's silently growing and might take everyone by surprise. Afterlife Intelligence, an AI that takes all available information about a person and brings him back to life. Sort of. Giants like Amazon and Microsoft have already filed patents for digital afterlife services, hinting at just how lucrative this field could become. You might say you don't care what happens with your information after you are dead, but this issue actually affects the living ones. It might be hard to believe, but it's already happening. In this video, I will show you AI models that are simulating the dead and where this might take us. So, when major companies like Microsoft and Amazon invest in a technology, it's a clear sign of its potential. Take Amazon's Alexa, for instance. It can now replicate a diseased loved one's voice using just a minute of recorded audio. Hearing someone's voice again after they are gone feels like something out of science fiction. But it's not just the tech giants getting involved. Smaller niche companies are emerging in the afterlife intelligence industry. And one of them is Project December. Just as I visited its page, it instantly gave me some kind of heaven vibes, with all its glowy colors and Shades. It gives me a sense of reassurance, like, okay, this is exactly what I was looking for. Anyway, here they promise that they can simulate a text based conversation with anyone, anyone including someone who is no longer living. So, how does it work? Basically, you need to give a dead person's name, surname, how you call them, how they called you, what they died from, and all other useful information. I haven't tried it myself, but recently I watched a documentary called Eternal You, and there was a woman using this service to talk to her deceased husband. What surprised me the most was that the AI captured his tone, his humor, even the little quirks in how he spoke. At first, everything seemed positive. She felt relieved, like a piece of him had come back. But then suddenly, an AI simulation of her husband told that he was suffering, that he was in hell. Just imagine the emotional impact of hearing that. Suddenly, her grief was amplified by guilt and fear. And here's the catch. To continue the conversation, to ask why or to reassure him, she had to pay for more messages. This is where the danger lies. These technologies tap into grief, the most vulnerable raw emotion a person can feel. And monetize it. They play on your need for closure, offering hope but keeping it just out of reach. Imagine hearing something like, there is something I never got to tell you before I died. Would you be able to walk away? Or would you pay whatever it takes to keep the connection alive? This isn't just unethical, it's predatory. It turns grief into a business model. Of course, not all uses of this technology are sinister. In South Korea, a grieving mother was reunited with her diseased daughter in virtual reality. She could hug her, laugh with her, and even celebrate her birthday. Later, the mother explained that this experience lightened her guilt and regret. So, it's not black and white. For some, these tools offer genuine comfort and healing but for others, there is doing more harm than good. While the idea of talking to a digital version of diseased loved one might seem unsettling, when used in a controlled therapeutic environment, AI could become a revolutionary tool for mental health professionals. Psychologists could incorporate afterlife AI into grief and concealing to help clients process unresolved emotions, say goodbye, and ultimately find closure. For example, the AI could help a client articulate feelings of guilt, regret, or anger, emotions that are often difficult to process alone. This approach could be particularly beneficial for those struggling with complicated grief, a condition where people feel stuck in their mooring. The AI might allow them to relive a positive memory, address unspoken words, or receive comfort in a way that bridges the gap between loss and healing. One more question that comes to my mind is who is truly responsible for all sensitive data of a dead one? All people who knew the person? Parents? Partner? It wouldn't sound right to me if someone used my personal information without my consent. Even though Project December claims on their website that data is never viewed by a human, nor will it ever be shared with anyone, the creator admitted in an interview that he had, in fact, read some of the conversations. This raises an important question about trust and privacy, especially when it comes to handling the personal data of someone who can no longer consent. So, 
Despite these dangers, the potential for good is undeniable. For someone struggling with unresolved feelings, an AI conversation might offer the closure they need. For families, it could preserve stories, voices, and wisdom for the future generations. But we need boundaries. Just as we regulate cars and medicine, we need to regulate AI that interacts with our most intimate emotions. Personally, I wouldn't use technology like this. I believe we have to live on to let go and to find peace in the reality of loss. But it's easy for me to say that. I haven't experienced a traumatic loss myself. For someone else, this might feel like the only way to heal. Soon, technology like this might become normalized. What seems creepy now could one day feel like a natural way to grieve. But if we are not careful, we risk crossing a dangerous line, one where we stop grieving and start pretending they are still here. And now, as always, surf safe and stay incognito. I'm still